There are two devastating events which transpired in America during my lifetime. The September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center and Hurricane Katrina. The September 11th incident maybe could have been prevented, but for certain, the events that followed Hurricane Katrina surely could have been prevented. It was known for many years that if New Orleans were ever to encounter a Category 4 hurricane, the levees would certainly not protect the people in the nearby homes and they will be washed away, perishing in the floodwaters of the Mississippi River. We were all glued to the television as we saw a play-by-play -play account of how our government is grossly unprepared to protect the American people from disaster. I don't know whether it's the governor's problem, I don't know whether it's the president's problem, but somebody needs to get that on the plane. We all saw the faces, the pain, the devastation, people trying to survive. Many, if not all, were left to fend for themselves. Children of all ages, unable to comprehend the events that were going on around them. A young child feels the burden and exhaustion of consistently trying to survive, as another cannot hold back his tears. With over 200 beds, water, and clothing, the Tucson Convention Center was ready. The local university donated personalized pillowcases to try to provide as much comfort in the only way they could. Exposure was there following the Katrina disaster and spoke to some of the black community leaders and volunteers who stepped up to the plate and opened their hearts to welcome the victims of New Orleans, assuring them they will be treated fairly and will do all they can to help. We want to make a difference. We want to make their stay as pleasant as it can be. We don't, we know we can't make it a pleasant stay considering what they've lost, but we want to make it as pleasant as we can. Now we meaning your church or are you a group of churches who have gotten together? We're a group of churches from the uh, predominantly African-American community, so we also want to make sure that when they get here that they actually see people that uh, resemble them, that have faces that look like they do. I think sometimes it's just going to be listening, sometimes letting them know that we're praying with them and that we care about them, and just showing them the compassion that Jesus would show if, if he were here with this situation. From the chamber standpoint, we're looking at bringing, doing some community things, bringing people together, soliciting African-American businesses to be some players after these people get here to get them some jobs, maybe get them trained to do some things because they're going to be here for a very long time. Our initial involvement was that we met with the uh, black community that had an at-large meeting, uh, say Friday night. And all of us have friends and family that have been involved in, in the situation there. Uh, so we immediately uh, sprang the action. Uh, some of us actually went down and signed to be on the Red Cross list as a volunteer. But when we heard about there's a push to have a visible, the visible black faces so that these people can feel more at home because they're coming from a 67% black population. So this is like a cultural shock when they come over here. So we're here and we want to make sure everybody's treated fairly. That's our goal. We want to be visible because they will have a culture shock here. And if we don't stay focused on that and make sure they're comfortable because they have lost a lot. And I'm very grateful because I just left Louisiana a week before the storm. So I, I am blessed to be here. So whatever I can do with my group of the Black Women Task Force and the community, I want to do that. They ask for help on that television and help us here. I mean, we're really ready for them to, to get on board and start educating them. I'm one of the volunteers. I've been here since Sunday, setting up, sorting clothes, waiting. <laughs> After a natural disaster, the victims are forced into the process of starting over and piecing their life 
back together. Uh, there's a process that you go through, um, registration, housing, FEMA, whatever it is set up, if you need medical attention or whatever. So as they walk through the door, you ask them how you feeling. Do you need to go see a doctor right now? Are you hungry? Are you, you just want to go to sleep? You know, whatever the case may be. Uh, and whatever they ask is what you provide. We would like for them to go through uh, the different stations set up upstairs so that they can get everything together. How are some of them feeling? How are their physical health and even their mental state? The morale is good, uh, much better than we expected. Um, we were told that some of these people here were forced to evacuate, and so they were, uh, we were expecting them to be angry about having to leave. The survivors were grateful. They received enough assistance to get them settled. My dad lives in Arizona, and uh, we came here to get any kind of assistance that we could get to um, get back on our feet or get back to normal, if you can get back to normal. And, uh, but we came here and everybody was nice. Everybody was showing us all kind of um, love and appreciation. And we got some uh, benefits and we were able to sign up for housing, temporary housing, and um, got medical. All the benefits, they really do help in the long run. <laughs> A mainstay in Tucson. The Tucson Urban League was there to lend its support as it has in the past to those in need. Right now we just came to give our support with uh, job, job development, case management, and uh, social support too, just to be there holding hand and companionship. So what is the main objective of the Tucson Urban League? The main objective is just to be, just to be here for them, because you know these are our people and know that we're here and that we love them and whatever they need when it comes to job or case management, we can help them out too. We also have all those services in-house. You know, if there's some t later on down the road, if they're not going to get it here, maybe they can come to the Tucson Urban League and get those services. Along with the services and friendly welcome the Katrina survivors experienced, they were also offered a taste of Tucson hospitality and entertainment. A special jazz concert was given in honor of the evacuees to make them feel at Are home. Are you planning on making Tucson your permanent home? Oh, no, nah, that meant people, you, these people hug you, man. For Bryce Winston, starting over is not an issue. I don't really view this as starting over. It's just kind of picking up uh, where we left off. You know, I think it's just going to be an interrupted period of time. Um, for a lot of people. But the question still remains for many people of color. Why was help slow coming from the government and even today perceived by some as no help at all? <laughs>